still use that handbook, I'm sure. So it being 7 o'clock, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we have a first item of business in that our clerk has had uh, a family issue, and so she cannot be here. So we need someone to take minutes for this meeting. Is there anybody who wants to stick up their hand and, and say, me, me, me? I just had an operation, so I'm not Okay, that's a no. I anybody? can't wait. Nicole, a little well. There's Nicole. Would you be willing? Very, I'm not very good at that. Just, I, just action items? Well, we have, you tell two, me what they we are. have two very um, reluctant people um, saying that they're not very good at it. I, I would say that if we can come up with some concise meetings, as long as it's accurate as to what happened, we're good to go. It's, it's maybe? Why don't, if Nicole wants to be told, write that down. Yes. I can tell that. That's what I want. Would you please take minutes for this evening's uh, planning board meeting? <laughs> Shelton opened the meeting at 7.01. And we're all present. And we're all present. And we're all present. <laughs> Nicole, are we giving you a hard time? Yeah. I, I don't want to be giving you, you a hard are. time. Well, I don't want to be giving you a hard time, but I, I, in my practice, it's real hard to participate in the meeting oh, yeah. and take minutes at the same time. So. Yeah, I, I would exclude you and, and me just because of... Because <laughs> <laughs> we're exempt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If... if if anything that's near adequate would be great. Okay. <laughs> You're a good person. Thank you so much. And can I suggest if you s distribute them, then we can come back with. Correct. Right. We can. Like we the, like, like the corrections. Right. And they will be uh, reviewed, no matter what, right. at our next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a copy of your minutes for tonight? Yes. 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 Uh, or no, not agenda. You mean the agenda? No, no, no. I know. I know. I know. I she wants to see week, so I want to see what the format is. That's, That's a great all. idea. I'm not sure. That's a great idea. Okay. Whatever. That's fine. Okay. Okay. In fact, we can. Okay. Well, in fact, that's our first so item of business: is, is to approve um, last uh, meetings minutes, which was on 927 and um, I would note that the title needs, needs to be changed from draft work session to draft meeting. Draft meeting. Or if we approve it, maybe not maybe maybe meeting. Right. So yes, cross out so work session. The, the first item is, is is to cross out work session in the title of that uh, those minutes. Is there anything else from the board as to? They looked right to me, and that was the meeting I ran. I wasn't there, so I guess I, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> well, you can encourage comments. Um, I would make a, a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. I'll second that. A motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's I unanimous. Oh, uh, I abstain, and so um, and so does D uh, Dan Poirier abstain from that vote. Of course, I don't vote anyway, unless it's a tie. Uh, so, uh, then we have the minutes of our work session on October... 11th, I, I do have one comment. Um, under review maps, um, there I, I seem to have made a note to uh, Sheldon will contact, no, I'm sorry, perhaps two planning board members could meet with Mr. Jeffers and Jeff Hayes. I say uh, omit and Jeff Hayes, because I think the meeting was really meant to be with Mr. Jeffers. Mm -hmm. And I'm change it to Becca will contact Dave. That's 
that was my assignment. Right. So, I'm, okay. So we can talk about that maybe after. Uh, well, I'm just saying. You know, I don't. Event. I have a copy of uh, August. Oh, you need a copy of the October of 11th. Do so you right. have a copy of the October? Okay, there you go. Okay. So, so, so about halfway down the page, under review maps. Yes. Draw a line through the Jeff Hayes. Yep. Yeah, and Jeff Hayes. Just omit and Jeff Hayes. Okay. And then change it to... Oh, show them what contact... Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Take it back. Okay, so I think that's the only thing I had. Right. Yeah. And then there was a lot of take, give and take of a very long sort of complex meeting. I, the bottom line is we managed to accomplish something because the map came out quite a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to say that off the record. No, I, I'll put that on the record. I think we should congratulate ourselves for a time well done. Okay. Because they really, they really didn't incorporate everything we suggested. And it's more. They, they, yeah. they uh, absolutely, they, they, when they included all the campsites, I was very happy about that. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. I guess on the record, we can say what David just mentioned that the map was greatly improved as a result of that meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, motion to approve the Work session minutes of October 11th. Second. As amended. As amended. Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I need to abstain. Okay. One abstention from Eric. You had the disease. I did. That's right. I am you all were diseased. Now. And we didn't get it. That's good. <laughs> okay. So I think that takes care of the two minutes. Let's do officer and committee reports. The treasurer's report. As of the 13th <coughs> of October, we had let's see, $2,709. No, nope, that's not true. This is wrong. We haven't really spent anything since last time, anyways. Do you have um, an agenda, Nicole? Hold on. Yeah, you do. Okay. Do I look confused? <coughs> no, I just wondered because an agenda would allow you to work your way down. Uh, yeah, we have about 75% of our budget remaining. And if our meeting is over by 8.20 this evening, David and I will be headed to the Budget Advisory Committee meeting to discuss our budget request for next year. Well, let's zip along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Secretary's report. Uh, we have one new application, which we will be hearing tonight, and that's all we got. Rep to the Economic Development Commission <coughs> at Farley. Uh, yes. Um, we have been meeting regarding the Tech Forum, which is going to be on November 9th at the, the kickoff. It will be at the townhouse, and at, um, we are going to be introducing the, 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 the subject matter with four speakers. Um, who will in fact be taking one month, January through April. First month we'll be talking about um, Instagram, second one about Facebook, third one about Excel, and the fourth one about web design. And the kickoff on the 9th of November um, is to bring them all together and hopefully let everybody know that that's going to happen so that people will come and hear about what will be happening, sit, ask questions, whatever. Uh, I've been approached today actually by um, Don Brown from Sandwich saying it was on the I put it on the exchange today. So he said, Oh, well our business group was thinking about doing a marketing thing. Can people besides Tamworth residents come? And I said, Yes, you're welcome. That's great. Um, so that I, I'm waiting to hear how many people because it's gonna be a little bit difficult to figure out food for them because we are gonna it's sort of like a celebration, kickoff party ish kind of thing. Uh, and then and then the, it won't be quite like that in January, February, March, and April. It will be more strictly business. And those meetings are going to be held at the down, in, downstairs at the, at the uh, Cook Library. So we're hoping that people will find that not only are, is this the whole program is to help businesses learn the different tools they might not be aware of to help market their own businesses, and also uh, to help individuals 
just who aren't in business, but who would like to be able to con connect more easily with their families and friends and so forth. And then there are people who just would like to know how to do Excel, who are doing like their books by hand or whatever. And so that would be helpful to all kinds. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I don't know the gentleman yet, but I've been told that uh, I was given a contact for this website, and his name is Carl Meyer. And um, so I was giving him as a lead for doing the Facebook thing, uh, uh, pardon me, for doing the website um, program. And so when I called him, I said, now, are you, will you be able to do a PowerPoint? Because we are asking the speakers to do a PowerPoint for it. And he said, oh, yes. He said, I've, given, I've done this for two, crowds of 2,000 and 10,000. I'm thinking, boy, are we lucky. So I think he's going to have a real great program as well as the other people. So anyway, that's, that's that. That's it. Thank you. Um, and does that incorporate anything from the Lakes Region? Uh, no, they okay. didn't. Uh, they changed. The, they canceled last month this this month's meeting okay. uh, because it was for an audit, um, and so the auditor couldn't be there. So they said that was the main idea. Uh, so I have nothing to tell you particularly about um, Lakes Region planning right now, nor do I have anything about the Mount Washington Valley uh, Economic Council because okay. they didn't meet either. Okay. Uh, we're up to the Municipal Safety Building Committee. Well, I finally caught up with what they had been doing. Um, I talked to Norman Claudier, who has been to almost all of the, the last meetings um, that I had missed. And we both missed the October meeting because it was scheduled for Columbus Day, and so we didn't go because uh, we were both occupied, and then it turned out they'd rescheduled it for the following Monday, but we didn't know that. So, um, so we neither of us knew what happened at that meeting, but what they have, uh, what the committee has decided um, after um, uh, um, zeroing in or, on four or five potential locations for the building is they're pulling back from um, style of building and potential location, and working, planning to work with the consultant to. Um, work on presenting the rationale to the town for the need for this building. Um, so they're going to bring the consultant back who's been sort of on a break um, to draft um, more of a position paper about the need for the town for the building, the need for the fire department or fire and rescue together, the need to have uh, a, new, a new facility. And that's where it sits now. And my understanding is that the consultant that they've been they've been working with, um, will be back at the November meeting to uh, work with the committee on trying to get more specific about the, the needs of the town and the benefit of um, moving forward. Very good. I did go to the, okay. the rescheduled meeting. Oh, you what did? It, I did. It was sparsely attended. Uh -huh. And they did basically what Becca says. They're going to invite Carl Biker back for the November meeting. To address briefly okay. something for the town meeting. Okay. Well, I hope they notify you about the next meeting. Um, hazard mitigation planning. I put that on there because I attended and because it's planning, and I think the planning board ought to be involved. Okay. Um, the next meeting is 11:14, and despite what the we town website says, I believe it's one to three. Gene. So anyway, they, and it's one of those um, matching funds. You have to earn two thousand dollars, otherwise the town has to pay. And attending the meetings counts. So anybody who's available, I realize a lot of people work during the day, but if anybody's available, what was the day here? It's eleven fourteen. Is that here? No, it's at the central fire station. Oh, central. Okay, so that's right. And so at the last meeting, they discussed. Um, basically hazard th threats and town statistics and the next one they're going to go through planning for the, the current plans and what they can what what is in, in place and what could be put in place to address the hazards so then I also got a copy of the previous um, hazard mitigation plan which was rumored to be the source of town property information and it's not. It's not because it was, they weren't the. No, no but, but we got the copy from Lakes Region. 
the Lakes region oh. did the last one. The current one is being done by a consultant who seems to be a sole proprietor. The Lakes good. region said there was one that had superseded theirs, but then maybe it's just a matter of timing. They're, they happen every five years. The last okay. one was Lake, Lakes region. Lakes region okay. did do, and there's no information about town parcels in there. Okay. I did talk to Dave Jeffers, Very good. Okay. by the way. I was going to report that. Um, wherever you would like me to report I, it. I think that should come under new old business okay. at, at the end of our meeting, yep. if that makes sense. That um, makes sense. Okay. Uh, our selectman's rep, anything? Uh, okay. As you know, the new chief was sworn in on the 13th. It was a good showing. I'd like to put out the thanks to the community. It was very much supported by the community. The new sergeant should be on board by next week. New sergeant? Excuse me? New sergeant? Yes. And who is that? Um, was that advertised? No. As you know, the <coughs> old sergeant resigned, effective date the 13th. And the chief put out feelers and a recruit came forward. And she was interviewed and she was accepted for the position. Anything else that of note? I mean, that's notable, but that is, uh, when, is, when when will that become? I think that they're waiting on uh, her being able to inform her chain of command that she's accepted a new position before we're going to give out the name. But that will become, I believe, at the next election, it'll become publicly recognized. And then we've got the advi the advisory budget committee that's already started, as you know, that that's you guys tonight. go there tonight. So that's the biggest items right now. Right, that's a big item. Okay, and the rep to the Conservation Commission. Sure. We had a very light meeting this month. We're all working on easement monitoring. This is the best time of year to do it. The leaves aren't on the trees. And speaking of trees, we're planning to cut a few of them down, because we're the Conservation Commission, um, <laughs> on uh, the trail at the top of Page Hill. We have a, I think it's in the deed that we can maintain a view looking towards Mount Shikoro and Shikoro Lake. And it's grown up, so we're going to do a little trimming. Is that from the fire tower, the view from the fire tower, or the, blue, uh, the view from the view from Page Hill? Hill? From the, the, the actual this, this point of land? The ski slope. Yeah. Yeah, right about where the old road tower went up. Oh, I'm Page sorry, Page Hill. I'm yep. sorry, I'm yeah. getting, I'm, that's my mistake. Usually gotcha. we're cutting trees up by the fire tower. I did notice that the trees are growing up there. Yeah. Okay. Very good. It's also sorry. impossible to ski down there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not fun. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's our officer and committee reports. We do have a public hearing tonight. It's the Public Service Company of New Hampshire, uh, DBA Eversource Energy, subdivision design review phase. Location of the proposal is on Maple Road. Map 214, lot 217. So I'll open that public hearing at 720. Um, so I'm hoping you can read the names of our board members here. Um, I'd like to just read the basic set of rules. Um, any person with an interest in the matter may testify in person or in writing. Any material presented to the board as evidence shall become part of the public record and will not be returned. Any person who wishes to speak shall be recognized by the chairperson and shall state his or her name and address. Any application of the applicant, I'm sorry, any question of the applicant or agent will go through the chairperson. Uh, members of the board may ask questions at any point during the hearing. 
Um, is, so who is the presenting person? Why don't you just introduce yourself? <laughs> Thank you. Do you want me to stand up? Or... Um, sure. Okay. Well, uh, um, no, we, we, we have a camera. Yeah, that would. But before you have uh, your full presentation, we need to just go through the secretary's Great. quick uh, report on the application. Okay, so why don't we? Do but that? why don't you? I'm just so okay. name, state your name and. Okay, my name is Donna Keeley, and I'm the community relations specialist for this area. So um, EverSource Public Service of New Hampshire has community relations folks who handle the 211 communities that we serve, and this happens to be my area. So I'm introducing the folks um, that came tonight to present to you the subdivision. So we have Sean Southworth, who is with Survey and Engineering from Eversource, and Nick Golan, who's with TF Moran, who is helping us to perform the survey work in the project. And they will be presenting the formal map and answering questions and such. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You might want to help Nicole with name spelling since she's okay. we'll graciously time. sitting in yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. So, do we have a report, secretary's report on the application? Yeah, so the, we received this application. It's at 289 Maple Road. It's 2.2 acres with 315 feet of frontage. Um, there's n the requirements for design phase are pretty minimal. They can bring anything that they like. But it was noticed, so I would make a motion that we accept the application as complete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, so um, why don't you go through your presentation? If, if, if there is a map, um, we should facilitate showing that map. Um, why don't we set up these easels in advance sometime? <laughs> it would be a good move. Okay. Do you guys have a copy? We, 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 we do have. Seventeen. Let me hand them out. Everybody can have one. If you have, that would be brilliant. That would be great. Thank you so much. Plan ahead to accommodate. Eleven by seventeen. That's perfect. Thank you. Can we put Thank you for that. Oh, come on. Here and Pat Bill over here. Okay. Is everybody else going to go the face? Can I suggest that you give these to some audience members and I'll get the live side? I believe I've made oh, enough. Okay. If there are some folks in the audience who would like one as well. Sure there are. All right, let me hand deliver. Thank you, Thank you so much. Right. There. Maybe, 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 maybe. There. maybe. No, I love them. Maybe. Maybe. Nice. Plan that right. Good plan. Sure, go ahead. No. All right. Um, again, my name is Nick Golan. I'm a licensed engineer and senior project manager with TF Moran. Um, we are part of the uh, White Lake substation team for the proposed subdivision. Uh, we're here to, to review as part of the design review process. Um, you went over the specifics of the site as far as where we're located. This is 289 Maple Road, lot 214, uh, excuse me, lot 214, 217, comprised of approximately 2.2 acres. Um, relative to where it's positioned in the landscape, we're bordered by Maple Road with residential properties to the west, uh, Route 16 to the east with a fair amount of grade change coming from the back of the substation down to Route 16. And then we have a little bit of a treescape uh, to our north with residential butter, uh, butters above. Um, and a lesser tree screen to the south with residential abutters um, to that side as well. Um, as as Don mentioned in our opening, uh, the real purpose of this subdivision has to do um, with Eversource's divestiture. Um, the intent here with this project is to subdivide the transmission distribution assets from the generation assets. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's been following it in news or otherwise, um, but this is kind of the culmination of, of that process. Now, what we've done being after we reviewed your regulations, and it pretty specifically states we need to follow state subdivision requirements, um, is that we have created a lot. It's just over a half an acre. And this is comprised of the generation assets. And then we have an additional parcel, which is approximately 1.7 acres, which is the remainder that Eversource would continue to utilize for their transmission purposes. Now, you'll see that there's some fun hatching across this lot. 
the purpose of that, that hatching is there are some cross easements that are associated with the subdivision. Um, there are components within the area that those generation assets lie that Eversource's transmission folks are still going to need some access to. And um, Sean can go over that in a little bit more detail if there's, there's some interest. Now, relative to the, the parcel and where we've struck that line, it's very important relative to uh, how the continued operations of the facility will work. We have located that property line uh, approximately 105 feet from the southwest corner, uh, remaining approximately or just under 200 feet uh, for the remainder of the lot. And why we selected that location is where the driveway is. It provides a nice common point of demarcation and it also provides a nice common de uh, demarcation for the, the, the location of those generation assets. So the generation assets are located wholly within this portion. So when we think about, well, why are we striking a line here? It doesn't meet the subdivision regulations as far as the um, minimum 200 feet. It's for that purpose. It's providing the best location relative to the existing assets within the yard. These are existing electrical components. Um, has anyone had the opportunity to drive by the substation or generally familiar with the area? Yeah. Okay, great. So you guys are educated as to what we have out there. It's a, it is a built environment. It, would it be at all helpful for you to maybe just delineate the line with a highlight of some sort? Too. I mean, it could be a green, I mean, I don't know if that's certainly adequate enough, but that might be helpful. I usually come prepared enough to have some highlighters in my bag, so we'll, we can check there otherwise. So let's, let's do this just for uh, purposes of letting everybody see this a little more clearly. I'm highlighting right now, that's the half acre that would be conveyed to the future buyer, or Thank you. to the current buyer. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Uh, great pencil. Now, when we made our original submission, we were still working with uh, an HDS <laughs> subsurface bureau, um, Don Buker has been our point of contact, to come up with the, the best plan for subdividing this lot, given that this is, this is a little bit of a different type of subdivision. This is not driven by any type of development, it's driven by the legislature and the requirement for every source to divest. The lot sizing meets DES's requirements, but we're kind of in a tough spot in that we've got underground utilities, we've got above ground utilities, uh, DES requires test pits, infiltration tests, such that you can design for any subsurface discharge. In this case, we don't have that. There, are, there is no bathroom on the northern lot. Um, there is an existing well with a holding tank located on the southern lot um, for which we would be proposing no changes to. So in that there is actually no effluent discharge, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do test pits. That data is not going to be used. Uh, there is a, an array of underground utilities. Eversource has done their due diligence in providing us that information. But what we were trying to do is avoid doing test pits. So there was a waiver request that was included within our package. And we've been going back and forth with DES as to invest, how do we best do this? Because this isn't the only divestiture project that Eversource has been dealing with in the state. Um, there was an opportunity, and this is how we had outlined in our application, to basically consider these non-building lots, meaning there would ever be a septic discharge. Now, the legal ramifications of that have proven to be rather difficult on how an easement could be conveyed to someone, being that Eversource would essentially be conveying themselves themselves an easement. Um, that being the case, we revisited the opportunity to do test pits. Um, Dick saved the site, uh, went out and did some additional reconnaissance, and we were able to find two locations just outside the substation, just outside their grounding grid, where we were able to dig deep enough handholes to be able to classify them as test pits. So relative to the application that you have before you, where we were requesting a waiver of those test pits, that would no longer be required. So from the standpoint of the application package to going into the state, uh, we wouldn't be requesting them to be non-building lots. This will just be a straight subdivision um, with nothing fancy about it other than the fact that there is going to be some cross easements back and forth between Eversource um, and the future user of the generation assets. Now, um, and the uh, road frontage for the southern proposed yeah. parcel. Right? Yeah. So we, we are limited in that one capacity, so that waiver would still, still stand. Um, in evaluating the waiver criteria, one of the things we look at is, well, if that waiver is to be granted, 
Um, are we going to be negatively affecting the public health, safety, welfare, etc.? And we all agree that, that the facility is there, it's been there, it's been there for since I think the late 40s, early 50s. Um, there is nothing about the facility or the, the subdivision of it that's going to negatively impact uh, the public. From the standpoint of the character of the area, um, and you just mentioned the age of the substation, we're, we're not really impacting the character of the area um, net relative to the request for a waiver for French. All these components are already here. Um, the components will continue to be here and can be, continue to be operated in the same, same means that they are today. And what we believe is part of that divestiture agreement. Um, it's a minimum 18 months that the buyer is going to continue to utilize this facility as Eversource has used it for the past however many years. Um, after which, it's a little more uncertain as to how that how they would continue to utilize the facility. But the intent would be that the facility as a whole continues to operate just as it does today and as it's done over the years. So relative to the merits of a waiver request, we feel that we met those, those components that are necessary. Otherwise, yeah, just open it up to questions. I have a question. Yes, sir. And I think a lot of people are concerned. You lot across the street, 214 165. 214 165. I know it has nothing to do with this. Yeah, it's the Eversource corridor. Yeah, but there, were, there was some activity that was going on down there that was a, I should say, <coughs> a topic of contention. Um, uh, or John, would either of you like to expand on? Are you speaking? I, I'm not sure what you're speaking about. Can you elaborate a little? Yeah, there was uh, at your other side across the street. Is that going to have any impact on what's going on here? No. Because there was some activity going on across the street mm -hmm. that caused a lot of discontent mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. Oh, so the with the okay. generator okay. running. So you're speaking about the noise yes. problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure that's what you were referring yeah. to. I, just I, I think yeah. that's what they're, okay. they're concerned about. So what exactly is the question? Is there any building connected to this separation going to take place no. over there? No, it's very, no. The, as, as the site exists today and in the area, nothing's changing from a construction standpoint. Right. The substation is remaining the substation that is there and the generation asset, which is that turbine, is remaining there until such time as the buyer chooses to do something different with it, which will be out of our hands at that point. But the substation is something that we need to still run our electrical system, and that remains an Eversource asset. And that is not anything that we're here to talk about construction or anything to do with that. We just need to split the two because we sold the generation. I'm just a little, may I ask a question? Okay. Uh, yes. Please uh, say your name, please. Beverly Hammond. Okay. okay. Well, my question is, Eversource and Public Service, but so there's two different companies now. One's going to do the generating part, and one's going to do the other. If you could just clarify. Sure. That it's a confusing. Bit. Okay. Yeah. So when the application was read, Eversource is a new name. Yes. So Public Service Company. I'll just give you the two-minute quick spiel. Public Service Company of New Hampshire has been was public service company in New Hampshire since 1926. And in the late 80s, Northeast Utilities purchased uh, Public Service of New Hampshire because Public Service of New Hampshire filed for bankruptcy. And in order to come out of that bankruptcy, that was per the company was purchased to, from by Northeast yeah. Utilities. So we were owned by Northeast Utilities, and we've been owned by Northeast Utilities all this time. Northeast Utilities merged with NSTAR in the last couple of years, which is a Massachusetts utility. And they ended up with a portfolio of utilities. They owned Public Service of New Hampshire, NSTAR, Western Mass Electric, Connecticut Light and Power, and Yankee Gas. So at that time, when all of that was happening, the new administration, if you will, the president and so forth, decided that you can't have five companies, five names, five logos. It's a bigger company. It needs to have a different name. So that's where Eversource was born. But in the sort of in the paperwork, we're still doing business as public service for some of these things that we need to do, like subdivisions, because we, the entity still exists. So that's really a name. The, the company that purchased the generation, all of our power plants were sold as part of deregulation. It was a, it was a requirement by the state of New Hampshire that we sell all of our power plants. And we're one of the last utilities that even owns power plants. So we're really just sort of the last one to do this. So we were mandated to do this. So this was sort of a culmination of something that happened in New Hampshire government. 
for deregulation. So this process just happened. The sales just went through and all of our plants were sold, including this turbine, which is up in Tamworth, so which cool. is, the owner of the so turbine. the owner is, Great. and I'll leave this for you, but it's called Granite Shore Power LLC, okay. which is a newly formed partnership between Atlas Holdings, of Greenwich, Connecticut, and Castleton Commodities International of Stanford, Connecticut. And I can leave a packet for the board of the news release and some of these details. So they own this, plus they own all our all our fossil plants. So, so all the, the power plants on the seacoast, low power plants. So they purchased all of it as sort of a package. So they will now be the owner of that one piece of equipment. We will still own the substation because we need that to connect into our system so our customers have power. Not that, our, excuse me, not us. Massachusetts and Connecticut and all those places get their power from White Lake Sub. We do not. I can't, you want, I can't speak to I that. Mean, no, no, excuse me. Could you? Uh, um, I'm well, not, why don't you finish your? So that was that's your, basically the explanation. Okay. If that makes sense. Does, okay. And, okay. Okay. So who else has a, a question? All right. Hi, my name is Brian Hobbs. Um, I don't live here in Tamworth. I did. I grew up here in Tamworth um, several years ago. But my mother, Mildred Hobbs, lives across the street from this station. And um, my only comment is that. Um, for years, public service and the electric company there has not been a very good neighbor to my parents. And there recently the concern has been, and there has been no, um, they have not talked to us about it much, we've called them many times, is putting in this other facility across the street. I have no idea what it is, but it was a fenced in area. I went over and talked to them about it. The people who were actually putting it in, because I happened to be at my mom's at that time, painting. And um, they said it was a temporary thing. It was just to take you know, care of some power while they were working on the other side of the street. They never mentioned that it was a very, very loud engine of some sort. I have no idea what. That ran 24 hours a day. Day and night. My mother couldn't sleep. I think other people in the neighborhood had concerns with that. There was no, n nobody had anything to say or, you know, give us any relief from that. And there was no help for that at all. It was for a period, short period of time, I think maybe three or four weeks, but nobody came to us, mentioned that it was going to happen or, you know, what we could possibly do about it. That was one thing. Um, they also have and have had for years, and that's, I know they don't want to talk about, you know, what is going on because, I mean, if this is only, this meeting is only about a subdivision, but they've had a jet engine or some sort of engine that runs, and that can run day and night, which is very loud as well. Can you clarify, okay, your first uh, comment was directed to the facility across the street from the subdivision, correct? Well, that's theirs. They, they put that in. Okay, and now you're talking about... Right. The, well, let's talk the, about that one for uh, finish that one then. Okay. Is that go my question to them is, is that going to go away, or is that going to come back? Are they going to utilize that again? I mean, it's supposedly, when they told me officially it was a temporary thing, but it's still there. Mr. Chairman, I think we can answer that question simply for you. Uh, apologize for the inconvenience, sir. So I've been briefed on, on what it was. It was a mobile substation. Mm -hmm. John, would you mind just giving a little bit of background on what a mobile substation is and, and how its need came about in that corridor for that, that period of time? Sure, sure. And, and I can't speak of the some engineering terms and things like that. Basically, what the mobile sub allows the company to do is work on the substation but maintain power to its customers at the same time. So it's a bypass. Yeah, think of it more than a bypass. It's temporary. Um, I think I was told that this is running for two weeks. It does run 24-7 in order to, uh, again, allow its customers, all the customers that are served out of the substation, to continue to have power. Okay, I, I will have to make one comment in that we need to stay focused on the subdivision application itself. I think if we start getting into neighboring prop properties and it's, it's, that's not in 
the purview of tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and I would just assume fine. if we I could can... restrict our comments to the subdivision property itself, that would be Okay, then great. I, my question for you then is how can this other topic be brought up? Is that something that we would have to put into your agenda somehow, or is that something sure. that we do with the yeah, town? We can help with that also. We have okay. the appropriate people to provide some follow-up information mm -hmm. uh, to these abutters after the meeting. Um, we'll give them our contact information, and I think we can get a speedy resolution to what your concerns are. So I apologize for the inconveniences or otherwise, but um, being that this is for the subdivision, um, we can make sure we get them connected to the right people to answer those questions. Um, and Thank you for that. I, I have Does a that help you? comment on that. It does not help me. Okay. Because we've talked to all these people, or we've tried to talk to all these people, mm -hmm. and we have not gotten anywhere. So I don't know if there's any other recourse, but that's, I think, what people are looking for. Maybe there's not. Maybe well, it's just you live with it. <laughs> okay. I have a question just yep. to help, perhaps with clarification. You're talking about it being a, a, a temporary generating system while we are working on something at the substation. Was that something on the distribution station or something in the generation? It was uh, just on the distribution side? On the distribution it's, side. Right. And it's, not, it's not a generator. It doesn't so generate it, power. It, it simply it, it, served, it, it takes the need, that the, the use that the substation currently has, mm -hmm. reducing the power down to get it to the voltage to get to your homes. This mobile transformer will do that temporarily while we work on the substation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the substation has the transformers and this sh shuttles the transformer right. activity mm -hmm. over to that while you're doing exactly. that. Work. So that kind of activity would continue to possibly need to be happened even after the subdivision. Okay, right. just wanted to clarify that, so that, that the really subdivision and the removal of the generating portion of it would has would have nothing to do with this. That's an um, mm -hmm. it it would seem to me that this would be an issue of of uh, disturbance in relationship with neighbors. It might be something that either public safety or the select board would take up. I don't think it's a planning board issue from my experience serving on a planning yeah. board. I don't think we have any tools. I mean anyone else on the planning board could jump in, but I don't think we have any tools to help you resolve the issue of um, temporary activities that a utility has to have um, and, and how they might notify neighbors and inform them. Um, you know, we, we, we all expect to be informed if, if the power company is going to turn the power off for repairs. Um, we know we can't help it if the wind takes the power out, but we know if there's an elective that we that we expect to be notified. So it seems to me that that would be the appropriate direction to go on in. And if you feel like, as neighbors of this property, that you're not being respected that way, that 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 would be the appropriate recourse to say that. Okay. That, uh, so one other question then is: Does the town have a noise yes, ordinance? And yes. what is no, that noise no, 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 in this case? Yeah, it's... No. I, I, I have to agree with Becca. I don't think we have any tools to help you. I, but I recognize I, you've got to... Yeah, I, I'm, sorry, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm just asking that question right. because I did not know the answer to that. So right. my, my, my suggestion is that the select board is probably the appropriate people to help you. Okay. Uh, we don't have, we don't have any tools to help to solve that problem. We we can't address what they do on that another lot. Okay. Um, then sorry. I do have one question related to this subdivision then. Is it an expansion at all, or is it just there? Is there expansion of the fenced-in area at all, or is it just within the, the confines of the current fenced-in area? Mr. Chairman, there's no expansion in the substation. There's no. Okay. Um, did you hear his uh, response? There's no expansion of the substation as <laughs> existing today. Okay. Is there additional? Um, Mr. Chairman, we help, I think I can expand on my response and maybe help probably Please more do. than a year. Um, what you see on this plan right now, if the planning board chooses to subdivide this property outside of a couple monuments, it will look this way when we're done. No changes, 
changes to the equipment, no changes to the use. So, um, to that end, uh, will there be monuments set to delineate that uh, Which property is one line? Of the items that we also want to discuss with the board this evening. Now, along, um, um, are we comfortable with those uh, responses? Well, we okay, before we move on to that, um, is there any well, questions no relating to, to what you were commenting on? Further discussion on that? Portion. Mr. Chairman, I wanted to, before you close the loop, I'll close the loop with just some information. So okay. We'll get All right. As long as, if you would like. Is it Hobbs? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So back, we did get a concern from a neighbor. I received the complaint from Darlene here in the town hall. So she called me and said that there was a concern from a neighbor, the Hobbs, and what did I know about it, which I promptly told her what I knew about it. I knew that this mobile sub was there, and I explained what was happening and called the daughter, I believe. I don't think I spoke with you, I spoke with a woman who said that she was the daughter of Mrs. Hobbs and explained what was happening and when the mobile device would be removed. I called her back and gave her that information. I followed up with Darlene and gave her that information and I just wanted you to know that that communication did happen, but whatever go happens going forward, we'd be more than happy to speak with the board and discuss this in a lot more detail at the appropriate meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have a Thank question. You. Did, I didn't hear it, maybe, or I missed it, but uh, when is there a plan to remove the mobile device? It's gone. It's been removed. It has gone. It was removed a few days after we received the call. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, like about a week after I got the call at the end of September, and I think it was removed the following Sunday or Friday. I'm not sure what, the, excuse me, I'm not sure what they're talking about what's a mobile device, but that facility is not removed. Oh, sorry, not operating. Did, sorry, no, not, did no longer just operating. Yeah. I don't know if it's, it's still it's there. Then. So it's no longer operating, Correct. but it could in the future temporarily be operated? Yeah. Question? It's used when we need to maintain okay. the substation. So that's a yes. So yes. Okay, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Maybe this is a part, so right. it will be. Oh, it, it will be. It will be. And we can talk about Yes, this because of maintenance reasons. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to move on. Uh, I think we're ready to move on to monuments of some sort. All right. All right. Now, in regards to the, the layout of the property, um, monumenting the westerly side at Maple Road makes a lot of sense. Monumenting uh, the east side at its terminus uh, along Route 16 makes a lot of sense. Placing monuments within the electrified substation, um, not as much so. So we did want to ask for a waiver of that criteria to not locate monuments within the electrified substation. Um, if it's a concern not to have any monumentation interior to the substation, we could look at a couple different things, whether we try and do uh, a tie course from uh, one of the concrete pads that's located there, or if we just provide some additional dimension um, to show what the distances are from some of the existing electrical equipment. So if for some reason there was ever a concern or otherwise, well, where exactly is this property line? Um, we could provide that additional information at that time. Is it a safety concern as far as getting in there? Is that what it is to it's, set the monuments? Well, you do need special training um, in order to be inside an electrified substation, but more so, what are some of the things that we used for monuments? We, we drive in um, iron rods or the, the concrete monuments or stone ones. Um, one of the components that you don't see in a substation is the grounding grid. Um, that grounding grid protects if there's ever an arc flash so that that electricity goes into the ground, not into somebody who's potentially working within the yard or otherwise. Um, driving things like that into the ground could compromise the grounding grid, so it makes it not an ideal scenario. So the request has a lot to do with the safety of the individuals installing the monument and the safety of the individuals within the substation uh, thereafter. So that would be one thing we'd like consideration on. Spray paint. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what alternatives there might be, but... Um, straight, straight line. <laughs> so the interior of the substation, and I was part in just, um, it's, a, it's a stone cross-section. Um, during the winter, during snow removal or otherwise, that stone gets moved around a little bit, so yeah. Um, well, I think highlighting with, with um, specific dimensions um, would really be good. Where it's fenced in, where it's I mean, it, um, so the the entirety of the facility is fenced in. Um, there's a very small portion, which is really the northeast corner here, that is not a substation yard. Otherwise, the, the property is a substation. And that's because of grade. 
rate differential, that's correct. Um, and there is also a reserved right away. I know that's associated with Route 16 that would likely prevent any future <coughs> expansion or otherwise that way. Uh, it's also the location of several of the utility poles that are taking the power on, out of the substation or into the substation. Are there any other questions from? I have. Okay. Pat. What, what would be the impact if this were not approved? Well, well that question is probably something I'm not capable of answering. Um, and I'm not sure that Eversource has a factory answer to that either. Um, I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, if that's a, something you want us to venture a response on. Um, let's put it this way. Um, at some point, we're going to have a tricky question to ask any applicant, more or less, um, for this. Yes. Well, so it was um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's an excellent question. It seems like it's a question that a lawyer would have to be addressing and not anybody necessarily from your. I want to step out of issues as engineer surveyor in this case and answer yeah, that, that question. That, um, I think as, as a board, we just have to weigh the application as is and, and make a decision, um, the result of that decision is another step. Well, well I, I, I think in maybe in keeping with that line of questioning, we, we I guess my thought is we as a board need to be convinced of a good, good reasons why we should approve a subdivision that creates a, a, sub, a substandard lot, a non-conforming lot, which is what we would be. And, and not, not, to, not to say anything, but someone else's financial obligations, that's not, that's not our problem. That's, nor, that, that's your, that's your nor problem. Nor are we trying to convey it in that way. No, no, and I, and I don't think, and I don't, okay. I, I think you're doing a wonderful job. But that's, to me, that's, why should, why should I approve the, cre the creation of a, well, a, a non-conforming T.F. Lot. Moran's been hired, and I'm here to try and answer any questions or concerns you have in regards to the plan before you. I tried to elaborate a little bit when we talked about the frontage. Did, what are some of the things job? that we have to really think about when we're talking about frontage? Um, the monuments, why would it make sense not to install some of these? Um, but this is a feedback session, so we, we love the fact that you guys have this within your regulations, that we can come in just yeah. kind of chit-chat about what it is we're trying to accomplish and yeah. find the best way to make it work, and if there isn't, then we hear that from you instead of going yeah. any further down the road. Well, um, so just just to make one point, I mean, there is no decision that's being made here, Correct. Tonight, just so everybody knows. Um, this is a design review phase, and uh, decision comes later if once we have a, a, a complete uh, application for the, for the subdivision. Okay, um, Becca. I'm, I may be sounding really stupid here, but I'm trying to understand what the ebb and flow of energy and stuff is here, because we've got, we've got power lines and we've got a generating station, um, and up until the state decision, they were joined at the hip. Mm -hmm. um, is the power that PSNH, EG, Eversource, using running through these lines coming from this station? That's, good. That's an excellent question. Now, John, do you have that information available to you as far as what components are doing what out here? I could, all I can say is that at times, so when, when ISO New England requests um, additional power, peaking power they call it, this generator will be requested to fire off and it will generate power and it just helps in times of really high energy use, area mm -hmm. energy use. This this whole... No, just the southerly portion. This, yeah. that, this whole generation thing is only used when the Eversource lines are calling for extra. Correct. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a peak, not, it's a peaking unit. It's a peak, thank you. Yeah, nice to know the phrase. So it's a peaking unit, so that means that it, it provides energy when it's called on, Correct. and it's called on to feed into the network starting right here. So right now, when you call on it, it's yours, and you use it. 
in the future when you call on it, you're going to have to buy the power from the other company. Right, separate from this discussion and the way it's going to work because we don't own our generation. Right. We will buy power on the open market just like all the other utilities do. Right. And we will buy that power for our customers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Including from my solar panels. Right. So, <laughs> so the, the, the state of this sale, has this been sold? They have been sold. It's at the Public Utilities Commission. So they need to approve it. And that is expected to happen before the end of the year. And when you, I'll give you the information in the packet. But yes. Okay. It has because been. it seems sequentially that you would want to have an approved <laughs> subdivision before you well. sell something. Those guys from Connecticut it's, don't buy something that's. It's, a, it's under a purchase and sale agreement. Correct. Um, it hasn't actually, a deed, a, a deed transfer actually hasn't, hasn't taken place yet. PUC needs to approve it, and then the deed transfer will take place. But I mean, is that, is is that on but condition that, of an approval for a subdivision? That can't, that can't happen without our approval, though. It, it, this, the sale of this, of this generation asset um, is not based on the condition of approval of the subdivision. They're not. The new, the new buyers know the fact that we're going for mm -hmm. a subdivision, um, and they also know the um, business risk of, of it not being approved. They understand that we're asking for waivers. So you can sell, you can divest, I'm sorry, but again, a clarification, Eversource can divest of its generation plants without divesting of the land under them, or without yeah, subdividing. Like condominium. You, can, like you can actually sell this plant and all its workings and still own the land. Or, well, and, and still, not still own the land, um, and not subdivided. You're right. It's kind of like it's in some right. aspects. It's kind of like a condo. Like, but, but, but you can't. Do I own the space and my couch that I'm sitting on? Yes, but I don't own but my so, yard. But that's, that kind of condominium is yeah. a subdivision. So that we're, we're, we're again, our, our, our effort approval. here is to try and make things run smoothly after or as the sale takes place, such that the generation user has their space. It's like being good neighbors and the transmission uh, distribution portion has their space. Now, there's certain areas that we've called out where easements are where we share. Mm -hmm. the, the areas that don't have that, well, there's no sharing. That's their space. Okay. Um, just trying to understand. So the, the condo, uh, the comparison is actually great. It'd be like your neighbor just walking into your house and be like, what, it's a condo. I can, I can come in here too. It, it wouldn't work that way. Uh, you would want to have your own space, and that's okay. what the intent would be. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess I, I from g g looking at things, from your end to this end, it, it, may, it makes perfect sense, and it's, a, it's to, it, to my mind, it's a wonderful presentation, but it's, I, 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 at least me, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced of why we need to, need, to, need, need, to, need to approve this, and that there are other sort of, unfortunately, not like there's, boy, there are a lot of assumptions being made, it seems, as if this is almost a foregone conclusion which I don't. No means are we trying to supersede the authority of the board. So maybe if I can bring it back to, uh, I think it was one of our first questions. Um, what are your concerns with the subdivision? Well, one, is, I mean, me, me personally, it's you're asking us to to, to create a non-conforming lot. Relative. So the the frontage waiver is a concern. That's one thing. And, and, and also, the it's yeah. Well, the, the lot size conforms. So the size of the lot that's proposed meets your regulations. Can I, can I, can I ask? It, it, it's called the soils. Uh, as far as the, it's a, it's a, it's a mix, but yeah, I believe primarily that's what. So the that, would be 30, 000, that would be thirty thousand feet minimum. Um, the state's requirement for this is twenty thousand. So but but, no. but, but if, you're at, if you're asking about our regulations, it's thirty. Um, where, did, where does the twenty thousand come from? That comes from uh, NHDS regulations, uh, which is ENBWQ one thousand. May I? This is a, a due diligence report that TF Moran prepared, okay. just so we can better understand the law. Um, but I'd be happy to send some in additional information to the chair as far as how we derived. You know what would actually probably be helpful? Um, I can provide you our lot loading calculations. Yeah, show, please. This is what we did. Um, as part of the design development phase, we thought we'd show you what we're looking for, what some potential waivers were. Um, but relative to the area of this lot, it entirely conforms. I do have a dimensional issue, though, with what? that frontage. I can't. I can't so, think of. I I can't think of a situation other than off-site loading as far as septic capacity, where twenty thousand square feet comes into play. 
Um, more of city type lots, like obviously around here right. we have much with, larger lots. We have without without offsite, offsite um, septic. No. So I had the opportunity to I, work I, I, on I a very large warehouse I project in Bowdoin, Hampshire, and it is right. hundreds yeah, of thousands of square feet. Yet the flow requirements are only three hundred, just between three hundred and six hundred gallons per day, where? which the, a twenty thousand lot, okay. thousand square foot. Well, lot we're talking we're talking about a subdivision. We're talking about the creation of a lot, which by you know, by definition, has to be a buildable lot. Yes. And twenty thousand square feet doesn't. So do, I don't want to give misinformation. Fit. The information that our engineers have compiled and surveyors compiled show that this is a buildable lot by state standards. We have been reviewing it with the Subsurface Bureau. They have our calculations. They review them. Did they approve no, We haven't made a formal submission yet, sir. But can, can I just say, we're, we don't. We have separate regulations in the state. So we, we have a slope and lot size by slope and soil, and it's, the minimum is 30,000 square feet for Group A. Three, I'll, three I'll make sure we double check our calculations, but our, our understanding is that you're so not requesting a waiver of that. So well, I, and, but my point is that you would need to because you, you have a less than 30,000 square foot lot. Yeah, so there's state regulations and then there's town regulations. Mm -hmm. and. Typically, the town regulations are more stringent than the state regula regulations. Okay, exactly. and, and I think in that case, that's what's happening here. The way we had interpreted, interpreted your regulations, and unless we're reading an outdated uh, town standard, I didn't think so. It looked like it had been pretty consistent. Um, was it referred to the state requirements for lot sizing? Um, I, so, I, I, I would, so I would, I understood would, that you've raised that as concern. Let us check our math. It's nothing yeah. I can look at right now, but acknowledge yeah. that it's a concern, and that we'll make sure we have it correctly. So it's Schedule A in our I mean, it's Schedule A in our uh, subdivision yeah. regulation. Yeah. So, so I mean, I've got. I don't. Again, it's not an attack on you, but I. I mean, I've. I've got this. This is the, the state regulations will, here, and it's thirty thousand square feet. We will double check. Unless we're dealing with off-site. So septic, uh, which, which the other thing I guess it's, we're it's not. important to, to think about. There's actually no effluent load. That's I know, but but you're but what you're, you're asking us to create a lot, which you you've given us a guarantee of. Uh, I think you said a year and a half. The year and a half, and then after a year and a half, it's not your problem. It's not your problem. It's potentially our problem. Anything could be done on that lot. We have no idea what we the guys no who buy it are going to do with it. They could right. They could, within 18 months, it could be sold, and who knows? So and now, and now we're on the hook as, as having okayed the creation of this non-conforming lot, which we then don't really have any oh, I'll be, control. I guess I want to be careful with calling it a non-conforming lot. It's it's a waiver versus a variance because there's no zoning regulations. But your point is very much acknowledged, sir. Um, well, it, relative, it doesn't it doesn't meet town standards. Yeah. So, so I understand your point, and I'll stop right there. So I would just say. Um, Appendix A of our subdivision regulations yeah. is worth reviewing, and just um, I think that needs to be brought into the mix. Of, um, I, I guess that would be another waiver if, if that was going to be presented um, for to our town regulations. Um, Can I ask for a clarification? You sure yes, may. Yes, indeed. Okay. Have you discussed three different possible waivers? Frontage? The waiver for the lot size and the monuments. Yes. Correct. And that's it. So, so far. far. Yes. Okay. Are there any others? Well, we'll, we'll have to check on our lot size in here. But the, I mean, I, I would say, personally, as far as the monumentation, that's you. I'm okay. You've convinced me as to why. Yeah. You don't need to monument yeah. those lines as long as it's very, you know, meets and bounds. Otherwise, are, are very clear. I'm okay. Yeah. I, I would be okay with that. I think when we consider waivers, um, obviously we, we're looking for um, you know an explicit reason why a waiver should be granted. But I think that, that in general terms, if you if you relate it to the general health and welfare of the citizens of our town, that it's not going to be detrimental to you know that essential fact, and and that you know. There's some reasons that our, organ, our regulations cannot be met in a reasonable way. Certainly, we're going to listen to that. Um, 
one of the things we didn't do is we didn't actually read our waiver request to you. And I don't know if every board member has that. Would that be of any value? Uh, well, you... I, right, so, so waivers aren't actually considered as part of the design review phase. Okay. But I'll, I'll acknowledge yeah, but that you won't be making any motions right otherwise it's, on it's it. To, it's totally appropriate to discuss them at, because of the nature of it, obviously. So the ones that we got were the... Um, Yep. Um, it was relative to the frontage, uh, EIF 7D, uh, to provide 105.15 feet of frontage where 200 feet is required, and um, there's 194.83 feet where 200 feet is required. Um, if I may, I'll read it. Um, yes, I don't want to grind an act, I know you guys yeah, have I, I, to get you know, Let's as well. be explicit because okay. I think it's important. That's why we're here tonight. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, the location of the proposed subdivision line provides appropriate separation between existing substation equipment, appropriate for division of transmission and generation assets. Permitting this waiver will uphold the purpose and intent of the master plan and subdivision regulations, as it will not alter the essential character of the site, as both the uses and distances between them have already been defined. So that's where I was talking about the distance between different types of equipment. It will not threaten the public health, safety, or welfare, as appropriate safeguards currently exist within the existing operation of the public utility facility, and redefining the limits of the property line in order to accommodate the frontage requirement to divest every source of generation assets will not frustrate the purpose of the regulations, and that the overriding factor of public safety is observed. Now, I, I, just as I'm looking at the... We sort of somewhat joked about condominiums. It, might that not be an, a more pleasing option to actually have, well, this, these buildings are under separate ownership, but we're not actually creating a new lot, which in 18 months could, who knows what could happen. I mean, is that... Is that anything that has been discussed or might yeah. be not a bad idea to think about? I won't speak out of turn, but as far as the information that's conveyed, been conveyed to me, this is the preference for both the current and future I'm owner. Sure it is. And that's why we're pursuing it. <laughs> so it's, it's, pretty, it's an easy answer on my part. Yeah. But it may be a consideration uh, should the application not be approved, I, I, I would suggest. Yeah, it's, there's some going back to the drawing board type stuff. To okay, figure it out. Uh, go ahead, Becca. Um, I'd have to check on our regulations about being contiguous, but is there not some road frontage for this lot on Route 16? That's not adequate. It's, yes, but it's not. Yeah. Well, you would add it to. But it's still not adequate. Right, but there hasn't been any discussion about why the road frontage oh, along Route 16 right. could not be extended but, to the north. Hmm. I'm just curious. Once you're up to 145, you only need 50 more feet. So the... F 50 feet. Is there a reason that... Why is this line right here, essentially, is the question, right? Why is no, no, no. Why is no. Um, 16? Um, why? But it, it looks like it's probably because of where the... Transmission the, the line is. Yeah, there's probably some practical... They're, they're constrained by their uses. Yeah. I don't think they're going to yeah. yeah, it, was, it was a tough process in trying to strike that line. Trying to figure out, well, okay, what's what's the largest lot we can do here, um, mm -hmm. then also provide an appropriate distance um, between equipment that's going to be used by different different users. Uh, are you confident that the the are uh, that there's no crossover in the, in that use between uh, on that line, and uh, if that line is is as clearly drawn as it could be in terms of those two different uses, there's no overlap. Oh, there will be some overlap between, between the two uses, which is why I have some, some common easements. Okay. Um, I, I think, if I'm hearing you right, your question is more so, why can't this lot be a little bit bigger? Is that... Well, I mean, if, if, if you could make it bigger, obviously we'd be happier. Okay. All right. So that is a great point, and we will review that as a project team, the pros and cons of whether or not we could make this lot larger to better accommodate the board's request. Okay. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. And the easements, are they... Delineate it in terms of you know as as their numbers and 
are they specifically? I mean, I should. They're each lettered and will have areas uh, associated with them. If you can see at the bottom, there's a proposed easement key. So okay. You know, what those hatches really mean and what the square footages are is, is the intent of that block. So, okay. So, can, I, can I ask you a question about those? Yeah. So, we're supposed to notify easement holders. Are there any holders of any easements on this property at this point? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. So, so these aren't actual easements. These are proposed. These are proposed. Okay, sir. Okay. So, I just, I just question the, I understand that they're very essential to your client, but I, asked, I question putting them on the plat. They could easily be removed. Um, when we read through the subdivision regulations, uh, we thought we saw that there was a, a necessity to have easements indicated on a subdivision plan. If that's not the case, you can certainly remove them. Provide for a cleaner plan, too. If you well, I, I just, I, I can, I'm, my concern comes from what the registry is going to get upset about trying yeah, to register always a plan. They, they can be a fickle foe. When it comes yeah, to it's like they don't like, they don't like um, cross-hatching and that. I mean, it's like, I, we're going to have to go back and look at that. I'm not sure that they allow cross-hatching. But so I mean so so they don't exist now so we didn't not notify anybody. That's correct. We're, you and, guys are within your procedural requirements right, as far as and they're and they're very important to you and your client and your potential buyer, but they may not be so important to us. Understand? Okay. And then and then I just I I guess I would echo Andy's. I I think both lots are not conforming based on frontage, and I think the um, what we are calling A is not conforming based on size. And I will also point out that your numbering needs to be consistent with our numbering. And I, I, a, a, I was actually hoping to get clarification on that. There was a sub suffix that you guys like to use that wasn't letter. Uh, yeah, it's dominant. numbers. Like, we, we're not hexadecimal speakers, <laughs> so it's, it's got to be numbers. Um, if we follow up with your assessor, can we get the appropriate sequence that you guys were yeah. looking for? Yeah, one and two. Dot one and dot two is, you got would it. work. That is an easy one to address. Yeah, I, I figured that would be true. <laughs> Okay, uh, is there any other comment from either the board or, or question uh, from the public? <clears throat> okay, um, hearing none, uh, uh, you're all set with your I, I think we've heard, maybe if I can just kind of reiterate some of the concerns to make sure we've got them appropriately addressed. Okay. Um, there's, there's a bit of a concern for, well, uh, the divestiture as a whole, what happens after 18 months. Um, and, and we'll try and talk as a project team how we can elaborate or otherwise as to the use of the facility. Um, the other item um, I heard was really the lot size um, and confirming that it is an area meeting the standards. And if it's not, that that's not something that you really feel comfortable with and that you would like to see that lot being bigger. Um, the other item I heard is there is still, there's a concern for the frontage um, that although we provided some background on what I thought we thought that would be appropriate for this use. I don't know that everyone feels entirely comfortable with it, so we'll, we'll try and do a little additional research on this lot, maybe some of the surrounding lots, um, to get a better understanding of, you know, is this the whole area conforming now? Um, do we have a lot of areas within the town that don't have 200 feet frontage? Um, this is somewhat of a special lot in that it is an electrified substation. Um, although if we don't hold it to a different standard, we do have to recognize that it's been here for 60 years, and it, it is different. So we'll make sure that we follow up uh, in regards to that. So we've got Schedule A to look at for the lots. We did talk about monuments. It seems as if we're on the right course there for monumenting the exteriors, but the interior would be something that we could uh, look beyond. Um, and the other waiver that we had requested in regards to the test pits, we've actually been able to conduct the test pits. So as long as the state's happy with the information that we're providing them, it sounds as if the town would be equally happy with that information. Am I reading that correctly? So. As far as uh, I, 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 think, I, I think I think I, I, think I, I don't. I'm, I'm probably not fine, you. but I don't know that we got enough. I would certainly like so. just more information from the state as to. But you said that they haven't made their. You know, they haven't. So it's it almost seems decisions. like a case of it'd be great to have the state review this, provide comments or an approval prior to the they, board acting on this. I think we we, I think we need state approval before we can act. Um, legislatively, uh, the, the planning board can't hold up an approval waiting for a state approval. But we, we could but make it conditional. We, we, we wouldn't that, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, we wouldn't not hear it, but okay. it would be conditional approval. Okay, I want to make sure I understood yeah. the, the, the relative statement. Um, but, okay, so we've got a little bit of homework to do. 
Um, can, can I just take one other comment? Yes, sir. Don't waste your time looking for other non-conforming lots because you'll find lots because <laughs> okay. there, there were lots of stuff created before we had subdivision regulations at all. Okay. So you'll so find... So let's acknowledge that the town in general, you'll find that 200 lot. foot standard is not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but well, 30, it's, 30, a, it's desirable and desirable for a reason. It's that, well, it, it, it's not. Every, every lot in town was, yeah, you know, we've got lots in, you know, in our town that were created. Yeah, 150 years ago. That's why we so, have subdivision. Right. So, so just because there are lots that are, yeah. So not so being keeping with the, with the neighborhood, neighborhood that doesn't mean that it's that's, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, well put. Thank you. Okay. And I and I would certainly well, you want to focus on the right points. So, you know, I don't I don't want to go and do a recent canvassing of the neighborhood and say, gosh, we had one 200 foot frontage lot out of 300, um, and you guys say, well, I don't really care. It's it's for this lot that's. So, well, yeah, um, so we'll we'll expand a little bit on you know, what's the purpose of frontage. You know, are we meeting that? Is there is there a public safety issue or otherwise? Um, understood that you have your concerns with it, and we'll try to provide additional information for the board um, to provide that comfort level. And, and so, do I take it that there's not going to be an additional driveway? Correct. So it was one of the things that we reviewed as a project team. Do we try and put another driveway in uh, to accommodate the different uses? Does it make sense operationally? Uh, relative to where the existing uh, strain buses are, the electrical equipment within the yard, you're trying to drive somebody basically rated some electric equipment. It doesn't make no. it doesn't make good sense. If we keep the existing driveway, no tweaks. So as we mentioned in the opening, no changes to the facility outside of the monuments. Um, it just provides a better historic use of the property. Mm -hmm. We're being consistent. Uh, no need to to try and add a driveway to create a conflict. Okay, um, if there are no further comments, uh, I can close the public hearing, which I will do so at uh, 8.17. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate your time. I think this went a little longer than we were expecting, but the feedback is great, and we'll see what we can do to accommodate it. Okay, okay. Your presentation was very, very well done. And Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Can leave this up for you guys? Or? Yeah. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> get three minutes to get them, <laughs> Sheldon. Get three minutes to get them to their meeting. Okay, so how am I to handle that? Am I to? Oh, we pretty much. If, if we have two members leaving, we pretty much. We still have a quorum. I'm going to stay because. Oh, you can see the call. I could see the call. I guess that's true. Sheldon, uh, I'm just reading this. It was the news release about the sale and just some other details, the public okay. documents. Yeah, so you thank have you. Yeah, record. thank you because I, I, yeah. I couldn't do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I did also well, send that to the town. That should be a part of the record too. Okay. Yeah, can we put that in the Yeah, this should be part of the record. Is that multiple copies? Is that multiple copies? There's two different? there. I'm going to break out. I can break up some more. I'll do it out here. So I, I don't, no, I don't think, we, do we need more than two? I don't know. I, don't, I think two is plenty. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 So before we close that, so, so we do need to inform the applicant with those right? 10 days. Uh, at the public meeting, the board may determine that the desired process of the application has ended and shall inform the applicant by writing 10 days. So we do need to send them something saying we're, we all, done, we're all done here. Okay. Well, uh, that, that's, just, well, that's from the RSA. Um, so that's an official statement. Yeah. That the, the design review phase has ended. Okay, so because, I, we, because that, we, we, we could we could we could be requesting them to make additional studies or do something else. We did not. Okay, so, so that's that's a me thing. Yeah. That, okay, so we need a statement. I'll, I'll send you the RS, the quote from the RS, or you can just have this quote. It from the RS. says at a public meeting, the board may determine that that's the design a, review process of an application has ended. And shall inform the applicant in writing within 10 days of such a determination. So you're saying we should determine that? Yeah, yeah we, we, should, we should decide that 
We didn't ask, we didn't ask them for any additional studies. We just said that we right. need to be on the yeah. community yeah. address. No, and so, and so we, we say, okay, this okay. is great. Now, actually, and it, come it, in it with needs to be sent to we'll, the yeah. applicant. Right. Probably can go to. Well, in this case, we have, I, you know, um, well, Dave has the applicant uh, application. Yeah. And to, okay, tell you what, Dave, can you just send me the applicant information or I, can I get it for you now? I, I, I can do it right now. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the question is are we going to continue, excuse two board members and continue our meeting? Is that what we're doing? I was going to report on my my uh, my thing with um, Dave Jeffers, and that's the only thing I had further. Today. Okay, and I can do that very can quickly. Can you wait wait until we do that, and then yeah, we yeah, may yeah. just officially end the meeting? Sure. Because I I'm, does yeah, anyone I else? Have, I do have one thing I want to bring up, but okay, tell you what, if if you're willing to be a little patient, we can do this quickly. How about okay. that? Okay. So, so I I spoke to Dave Jeffers. Um, he's um, invited me and David to come meet with him. We have to set a time uh, next Wednesday, November 1st. Um, and we pin down the, the numbering thing that, you know, so that's straightened out. Um, he said he had used um, the same sources that we had thought for everything. Um, and you. I cut to the chase and said, we just need to provide you with a proper source for the town-owned property, which Darlene did for me. Good. Yes, I saw that. Thank you. So I am going to provide for him from the town tax base the list of town-owned properties, and I have that in the digital form. Um, so we can provide that. So you and I can go out there with that and and the cemetery map. Yeah, we need to edit out all the uh, tax inquiry properties out of that list. It just it's over. Okay. Well, that's great. I'm glad you're going to get together. Um, we're making progress on that map, the ongoing map. Um, okay. And, and that that was that was it. Um, okay. And David, you had something. Yeah. So I want to bring up something that I guess goes to the selectmen. So in review of this application, there's not a separate lot. There's not a separate tax record for map two two fourteen two seventeen. It got merged in with the power poles, and so there's no acreage involved. So I'm, I can't figure out how that works. Um, and it brought up a bigger question, though. It's like, I asked Darlene about reconciling between changes to the tax maps and changes to the tax list, and it doesn't seem like that happens, um, which. There's a number of parcels where the tax map don't match the tax list, the number. And, and there's a couple, there's at least a couple by PS and H where the, the one across the street, the 214, um, 165, that doesn't show as a separate part. Would you say the tax map don't the tax The, the, the tax don't map match. Is, is missing certain items. There's no record for this parcel in the tax on the tax cards. There's no separate tax card hmm. for this lot. It's mixed in with... It got, somehow it got combined with... The power the two, the two, the 200-0-300, which is all the power poles. So we build, we, we tax them on the tower, power poles. I don't, I can't see that we... We're taxing tax them, them on the land? No. Whoa. Hmm. And that, that just seems... So it would seem to me that you would reconcile that how many acres I had in the town this year, after the changes, I still got the same number of acres, <laughs> as opposed to some of them went missing. Um, Good question. I'll find out. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, right. Right. That is new. It's there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Any other items before the board? Um, Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, there we go. We did it. Good job.